Hi, welcome to Stat Stuff. I'm Matt Hansen. In this lesson, we'll review the DMAIC roadmap again and dig a little deeper into the third layer, the control phase of DMAIC. Just as with the prior four phases, define, measure, analyze, and improve, this third layer will serve like a roadmap to navigate you through the different tools and resources necessary when working in the control phase of a DMAIC project. So let's begin by looking again at the five basic steps for resolving a problem. Previously, we, we introduced the five basic steps for resolving a problem. And then we applied those five basic steps to the DMAIC methodology, the five phases of the Six Sigma DMAIC methodology. And last time in the lesson, we had also talked about the high-level questions we would ask for each of those phases in the DMAIC methodology. We also took that a step further. That's what we call level one. That is, at the top level, we have each of these different questions that we're asking for each of the phases within the DMAIC methodology. So we dug last time into taking those, those questions to another layer, a second layer, going a little deeply like this, where for the each phase, again, we've got the defined phase where we have the top level question that we're asking ourselves. And again, we said, if you cannot answer yes to that question, then you ask yourself the second layer of questions that are in here. And here's a guide for the different tools or resources that can help you in helping to answer those questions. And that can ult ultimately help you in answering this top level question. And what we said is that the goal is to try to answer each of these top level questions for each phase. And then as you do answer yes to those questions, then you move on to the next phase and then to the sub questions within those phases and so on all the way through the control phase. That's the introduction again to what we did last time when we talked about the level one and level two questions for the DMAIC roadmap. Okay, now let's dig a little deeper by looking at the third layer of the control phase of DMAIC. Just as we did in the prior phases for DMAIC, we're going to dig now again into the third level for the control phase. And this is what it looks like at the third level. So in here, what we're trying to do in the control phase is ultimately answer this top level question. That is, did the improvement successfully and permanently resolve the original problem? Well, once we can answer yes to that, the project will be complete. But in order to get ourselves to that point to make sure we're confident that we can answer that question, we have to ask ourselves a few extra questions in here at the second and third layer. So here, the first question of the second layer would be, did you implement the improvements? Well, in order to understand that for sure, whether we did, you need to ask yourself a few more questions. For example, do you assess the potential risks for full implementation of the key improvements? If not, this is where you can refer to the FMEA or where you can do that risk assessment like an FMEA kind of does for you in order to figure out what are those potential risks. And next, you want to ask yourself, do you build, did you build an implementation plan for the key improvements? Well, this is where we went over previously the pilot plan which is also pretty much the same framework as an implementation plan the only difference being that this is not just for test purposes but for the full implementation of the improvements because we've been able to prove through the pilot that they were successful once we've got that we can move on to the next question did you build a scorecard for the key improvements this is where it's critical for us to make sure we have a scorecard so we can track those improvements to make sure that they are remaining successful and sustained as we intend Next, we want to ask ourselves, do you know if your scorecard data is accurate and the method for collecting it, if it's a manual method, was repeatable and reproducible? This is where, just like we've done before, when we collect the data originally in the DMAIC flow back in the measure phase, we wanted to run a measurement system analysis or MSA to make sure we could trust the data. Well, we're still doing a lot of data collection at this point. And again, if it is manual, then we'll need to make sure that we can trust this data, trust the accuracy, repeatability, and reproducibility of the data. That's where we need to do another MSA, possibly at the end here of our project, to make sure we could trust this data we're collecting. The last question here we want to ask ourselves is, did you get agreement from your team where the improvements will be implemented? This is where you need to go back through getting the sponsorship necessary to make sure the team agrees where these improvements will be implemented. Not just that they're going to be implemented, but it's essential that they understand where they're being implemented and even agree to the entire plan for how those improvements will be rolled out. Once we can answer yes to these third level questions, we should be able to say yes at this point the improvements are fully implemented. Then we can go to the next question here at the second level. Are the improvements successfully meeting expected results? Are they sustained and in control? This is where we can use control charts in order to really answer that and know that for sure. Next at the second level, we'll ask ourselves, did you fully transfer control and responsibility of the improvements back to the process owner? 
Well, in order to answer that one, we want to ask ourselves a few other questions here at the third level. That is, did you define the standard operating procedures, or SOP, for the improvements as needed? That is, this is where we need to build some standard operating procedures to make sure we define what are those necessary steps ne for, for making sure the improvements are defined and sustained. And next, did you build a control plan to help sustain the improvements? And also, for the control plan, did the process owner accept responsibility for controlling the new improvements? It's not enough just to build a control plan, but we need to make sure that the process owner or whoever we identified within the control plan who has ultimate ownership, accountability, and responsibility for making sure that they track the progress of these improvements and they're watching it, engaging it to make sure that they are sustained. We want to make sure that they agree to that and are, are willing to accept that responsibility and all that's defined within the control plan. Once we can answer yes to those questions, then we can move on to this last second level question, which is, does the team, which would include the sponsor and champion, agree that the project is complete? Well, a couple things here are, did you update the project storyboard to reflect the project's life cycle and results? This is where you start to begin the project closure process to make sure you've got everything fully documented and you're able to document not just all that you've gone through up to this point for making it successful, but also the results that are coming out of it. And then finally, ask yourself, did you get agreement from your team and the leadership that owns the area where the improvements are going to be implemented? Did you get their agreement that the project was successful and complete? It's not enough just to say it's done and kind of let it go on. It's good to make sure you have formal closure, that they agree the project is fully done and complete, and you can wrap it up with a bow and walk away and call it done. This is, again, a critical area of sponsorship. Sometimes it, sometimes it gets avoided, but it's really essential that you try to work through and getting that formal closure from the leaders and the entire team who are involved. So at this point, once you can answer all those questions, you should be able to answer yes to this, this ultimate question for the control phase, that is, that the improvements were successfully and permanently resolving the original problem. So once you answer that, then you can walk away, the project is complete where the final outputs coming out of this control phase and ultimately the final outputs that you would see from the project now will be the final project storyboard that documents everything in the project. You'd also have a control plan, the SOPs as needed, and a complete agreement from the entire team, the project is done. All right, before we close this lesson, let's discuss how we can apply some of these concepts in a practical way. I'd like to identify at least two different projects that you might have led or worked on in the past in your organization. And for each of those different projects, review the questions that we went over down at the level three for the control phase. And then ask yourself what questions within that level three and any related tools or resources that were identified were not addressed in the project. And if they weren't addressed, then why were they not addressed? And what different outcome or results could have been realized if they were addressed in the project after all? Well, that wraps up this lesson. Check out statstuff.com for many more resources that can help you achieve powerful results. I'm Matt Hansen. Thanks for watching.